This is a community-supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. Another John Doe defendant has beaten a copyright troll in one of these BitTorrent file sharing lawsuits. Let's take a look. This is not Strike Three Holdings or Malibu Media. This is Criminal Productions, which the judge is just going to call Productions, I guess. That's, that's kind of fine, actually, so I don't have to keep saying the criminal word over and over and over again. But this is versus Darren Brinkley. I'm not sure why Darren is named. Uh, quick note, when you hire an attorney like me, we can often protect your identity if you want, if you want us to protect your identity. Maybe Mr. Brinkley wasn't so worried about it. On June 7th, 2017, Plaintiff Criminal Productions, Inc. filed a complaint for copyright infringement against numerous Doe defendants for illegally downloading the movie Criminal. In the course of discovery, defendant Darren Brinkley was identified and named as one of the Doe defendants. After several months of pleadings, motion practice, and discovery, Productions, Criminal Productions, moved to dismiss its claim against Brinkley. In an order dated July 6, 2018, the claim was dismissed with prejudice, which means the claim is adjudicated over, can't be brought again. Basically, Brinkley is the uh, prevailing party at that time. Brinkley has now filed a motion for an award of his costs and attorney's fees in the amount of $63,000 as the prevailing party under 17 U.S.C. 505, which is the fee-shifting provision of copyright law that says the judge may, in their discretion, grant the attorney's fees to the prevailing party. Brinkley is the prevailing party because the claims brought against him were dismissed with prejudice. Pursuant to 17 U.S.C. 505, the court may, at its discretion, award costs and fees to a prevailing party. The court's exercise of discretion is guided by the four non-exclusive Fogarty factors, the frivolousness, motivation, objective unreasonableness, and the need in particular circumstances to advance considerations of compensation and deterrence. Fee awards to plaintiffs under Section 505 should encourage the types of lawsuits that promote the goals of the Copyright Act to encourage and reward authors' creations while also enabling others to build upon that work. Brinkley has not shown that production's claim against him was patently frivolous. So that's, it's not frivolous on its face or that it was improperly motivated or that it was objectively unreasonable. To establish copyright infringement, a plaintiff must prove ownership of a valid copyright and unauthorized copying of constituent elements of the work that are original. Productions attached to its complaint some evidence regarding both elements the certificate of registration of a copyrighted work, and infringement capture log showing that an IP address assigned to Brinkley was used to download Criminal Productions' copyrighted work. Now, this one up. This is really important because this is the line. If they do show capture logs showing that the, that the IP address was used to download the copyrighted work, you don't get your cost and attorney's fees. These items provided bare support to the allegations, so Productions accordingly had some basis for filing a claim against Brinkley. So keep in mind, these are the words. It provides bare support and has some basis. That's enough. Brinkley contends the frivolousness of Productions' claim is evident from the fact that it was voluntarily dismissed and that no supporting evidence was produced. While there are plausible explanations for the dismissal and non-production of evidence, other than that the claim lacked merit, the early declared intention to dismiss the claim, excuse of an answer, and movement towards settlement suggest the claim was not deeply supported. The fourth Fogarty factor considers the need for deterrence. Production's conduct in this action was not without fault. Productions refused to participate in discovery. Productions did not serve initial disclosures as required by Rule 25 or 26 and did not respond to Brinkley's first set of document requests. Before Brinkley was able to obtain an order from the court addressing these failures, Productions moved to dismiss Brinkley from the case. As Brinkley argues, this avoidance of disclosure and discovery obligations is consistent with a typical litigation behavior of a copyright troll who targets hundreds of defendants and offers quick settlements priced so that it is less expensive for the defendant to pay the settlement than to defend such a claim. 
Such plaintiffs often dismiss cases to avoid litigation expense. This order does not adjudicate or determine whether many of Brinkley's allegations about productions and its counsel are true, but production should be deterred from filing lawsuits in which it declines to provide evidence to a defendant, avoiding disclosure and discovery obligations, thus forcing defendants to incur costs, even though the defendant will never have the opportunity to mount a particular defense because productions is ready to dismiss when opposition arises. The motion will be granted in part for that reason. In determining the amount of the award, the starting point is the lodestar figure. The number of hours reasonably expended in the litigation multiplied by a reasonable hourly rate. Three attorneys billed time on this matter. Attorney Clay billed 110 hours at $410 an hour, minus write-offs, for a total of $41,000. Attorney Hool billed 47 hours at $325 an hour for a total of $15,000 or $16,000. Attorney Madden billed 20 hours at $312 for a total of $6,271. The total is $63,000 approximately. On December 14th, shortly after Brinkley had been served, Productions informed him that the matter could be resolved if he would sign an affidavit swearing to his non-involvement. By the way, this is what I do with my clients. If my client comes to me professing their innocence, one of the very first things I do is ask them to sign such an affidavit of non-infringement or affidavit of innocence. And assuming they're willing to sign that, that goes on the docket and that goes to to the defend to the plaintiffs right away because then that establishes a moment in time where if they continue to act, I can make the argument that they acted frivolously. And he was supposed to provide information to help track down the person who did illegally download the copyrighted work. Brinkley understandably refused. On December 22nd, Productions informed Brinkley that he need not answer the complaint pending settlement negotiations between the parties. Brinkley rejected production settlement overtures and instead began vigorously litigating the case, filing an answer and counterclaim on January 12th, 2018. I recently did something similar against Malibu Media. It was a lot of fun. The case then exploded in defense activity. Productions communicated similar settlement-oriented messages to Brinkley on January 12th, 15th, 26th, and February 2 of 2018. On each occasion, Brinkley declined the opportunity to resolve the claims against him before running up significant legal bills. On December 22, 2017, Brinkley's legal bills from the attorneys Clay and Hool amounted to $2,420. So you can see what's going to happen here. They're saying that Brinkley ran up a bill and didn't have to. You always have a duty to mitigate damages, even your costs and attorney's fees. Had Brinkley signed an exculpatory affidavit at the time or accepted the truce proposed by Productions to engage in settlement discussions, his legal bills would not have escalated as they did. Accordingly, these hours worked by Brinkley's attorneys after December 22nd, 2017, and before the order dismissing him July 6th, 2018, were not reasonably incurred and will be excluded from the calculation. So it looks like the judge wanted to hit criminal productions with as many attorney's fees as it could, but the court was understandably barred from uh, incurring the attorney's fees for the frivolous part of the lawsuit, the frivolous part where Brinkley became frivolous. And, and please understand this. Here's how it happens. And here's how it happened in my case. You find out that opposing counsel has a weak case, so you immediately turn it up to 11 and just go hard at the case, file everything, and really just make them regret going after an innocent person. You're allowed to do that, but you're not allowed to ask them to pay for it. They'll have to pay for a bit of it, the part that was required, but the full-on litigation when you could have just settled it, you're not going to win all that money back. And that's what's happening here, is Brinkley is not getting all of his money back. Brinkley will be awarded the $2,440 plus $2,000 in fees with regards to this motion. So the $2,000 is from this motion, the fees and costs motion. And so... Brinkley has not complied with apparently Utah, District of Utah's civil requirement 454-2A. Let's find out what that is. Uh, taxation of costs. Let's see, what was that? 54-2A. So let's go down, oh, way down here. Within 14 days after the entry of final judgment 
the party entitled to recover costs must file a bill of costs on a form available from the clerk, a memorandum, and a verification, etc. Failure to itemize and verify costs may result in their being disallowed. And that's what the judge has done here. They have disallowed the, uh, you know, any other award of fees and costs. So the judge grants the costs $4,420 total. And so he could have had more or the case could have been over for less, but he unreasonably and vexatiously multiplied his costs and therefore eliminated any right or, or ability or opportunity to recover additional attorney's fees and costs. So don't do that. It's, it's certainly fun to go after the copyright trolls. I won that case that, that, my, that I went after my guy and we parted ways. And I'm not, I'm just confidential settlement. I'm not, I can't say who paid who or how much. Even if we, even if I won money, I can't say it. So, but, but it was fun to go after them and, and, and get my own version of this. So, but we did not unnecessarily multiply the costs. We were not, I knew that I wouldn't be able to get all the money back or anything if I kept going. So we took what we could and we got out. Let me know what you think of the $4,420 fees and costs judgment against the copyright troll. That's still cool. You still got a copyright troll to give you money. That's awesome. Good job. Just you, everybody needs to see what, what happened there, that there was a line and you crossed the line. And once Brinkley crossed the line, you don't get the attorney's fees after you cross the line. You can't be frivolous or unmeritorious or, you know, go against settlement negotiations so that you can win the case and prove a point. You can prove the point. You're allowed to win the case and prove the point. You can't do both. You can't win the case to prove a point and get all your fees and costs paid for if you didn't have to prove a point. Yeah, he flew too close to the sun with this one. And his wings uh, melted and he fortunately yeah, landed yeah. still having $4,420. So unlike Icarus, this guy can go buy more wax and make more wings. Just like me, I, I did not wreck my one wheel the other week when I fell off of it. I just wrecked myself. So I heal up and then I still have my one wheel and I can go back out and fly too close to the sun again. So that's our show, everyone. I'm Leonard French, your favorite newlywed pirate hat wearing copyright attorney. This is Lawful Masses, your favorite legal news and education channel here on YouTube and Twitch and Floatplane. Thank you very much to our financial supporters in the month of July. Thank you to BU number one Simmons. Very special thanks to you. Thank you to our $50 plus supporters, Nicely Done Defense, Joe Tyson, Wes Delge, Citizen of the Sovereign, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Kyle Modrock, Spirit Bear, Jan de Grey, Michael Pierce, Daniel Perez, Blackleaf, Benjamin Hightoff, Steven, Cute Grills in Your Area, Strawberry Pup Tart, Long Reach Jones, Definitely Not Prenda Law, Ugly Grill, Shiloh T, Gregory Conklin, Josh Baker, Rudolph Bescher Jr., Oscar the Prophet, Jay Dixon, Hot Grills in Your Area, Ammonite, and Brandon Abel. And thank you to the $5 plus supporters who are scrolling on the screen in front of me and on the LED panel behind me. And you will all be in the description of the videos that drop. I love you all. I will see you then. Bye. I know we're acting stupid